are all weirdos. Weird science is the revolution. Weird science is the revolution. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the best comics of the week show. And I'm here as always with my man Gray. What up, Gray? What up, Jim? I'm not so genki today. I'm a <laughs> I was gonna bit ask hungover. you. Neither am I. You're hungover. I just don't yeah. feel good. And the way we're recording is the opposite again of what we usually do. It's late or getting late for me, very early for you. And both of our wives are shaking their fists at us as we record. (laughs) On opposite sides of the planet, we're doing the same exact thing and getting our wives We have so much in common, don't we? Yes, we we do. So here we are. And this week, again, a little struggle to get some books from the big two. But we have enough on the indie side of things and surprisingly two DC books. But... Before we get into this again, this these are the books that we like. That doesn't mean you have to like them or that we hate everything you like. And why I'm saying that is please let us know the books of the week that you think are the books of the week in the comments and let everybody know, not just because you want to fight with us, which may happen, but because it's one of those things where some people might not realize the book's out or that something pretty cool. We'll be talking about a book tonight that you got me into because of the show. And also a lot of other people I saw liking it. I I trusted you going in. But when I saw so many people comment and like, oh, my God, that is great. Then I'm like, all right, I'll give it a shot. And I do love it. And we'll we'll, we'll, I'll tell you what that is in a minute, because we're going to get right into this. So our wives don't kill us. And we're going to start with DC Comics. We have two. One of the picks is a dual pick for us. The first pick was just my pick. It's Action Comics number 1064. Written by Joshua Williamson, art by Rafa Sandoval. It's four ninety nine. Just to mention, it is oversized. It's the beginning of the House of Brainiac story, and I'm telling you, if I had to rate the book after four or five pages, I would have rated it a I'm going to strangle somebody. I was so angry. It's this crazy Lois bebopping around town, and it's like everything's happy, everything's awesome. It was annoying to me. I really it threw me off. And in fact, the first time I read it, I I stopped. I'm going to have to read it anyway for our DC Comics podcast. But when I end up starting, I'm like, I can't deal with this. Then I ended up reading the whole thing. And it actually gets better after that. I don't know if everybody else was annoyed like I was. But boy, Superman's surfing. She's bebopping around. I just couldn't take it. Oh, my God. I couldn't take it. But it is the House of Brainiac. So big things happen. And basically, a swarm of Lobos end up attacking metropolis and you kind of get the idea of what brainiac's up to he's more up to gathering people gathering heroes than actually bottling cities they all freak out they think that he's going to bottle metropolis but it also again if you have been reading joshua williamson superman stuff because again this is joshua williamson now doing both action and superman that it's the sins of lex's past it's always something that lex has done that keeps running into problems that's what this is including his daughter, Lena, who I really like. But it, it's a really good start. I worry the only thing is Joshua Williamson, he starts things well. Sometimes he meanders and then thuds at the end. But this is a pretty good start. So I, I put it on the list. And Rafa Sandoval's art is really good. But I recommend that everybody read it. But we'll move was, on to... I was well, going to say, what, Jim, um, yeah. Rafa Sandoval, he's getting lots of love in the, the comments, the reviews on League of Comic Book Geeks. Yeah, is no, it really it, good? It looks, yeah, it looks really I've good. I've not read and it, the, so... The it's pretty much I'd love to call them the League of Lobos, but it's just the Zarnians that you ended up having uh, both cloned and grabbed from the last city of Zarnia that you had Brainiac. Okay. Get. And so the one big thing by the end is that you get the idea Lobo is going to you know be a little pissed off about this. It's funny because I think they're going to play the idea that Superman would love to have more and more Kryptonians. Right. Oh, my God. He'd welcome them. There's no way that's Lobo's thing. To say that he's the last Sarnian, so I think he's going to show up pretty pissed off. But my, th- I like Lena. I like uh, Lex's daughter, but she has that connection to Brainiac, and now he ended up grabbing her. And then Lex even has a hero moment to save Superman. So it- it's a pretty good start. I-, I did really like the start of it, but the art is the art's great. But speaking of great art, just see where it's going. I- did I set the tone? I told you I would set the tone with the first book. I remember last week. Whatever the first book was, we got done talking about it. I looked. I'm like, we, we've talked 15 minutes about what this is supposed to be. It's supposed to be a highlight It's supposed show. to be quick. Jim, you always say it's going to be quick. It's going to be yeah, quick. Yeah, it never is. Last week was crazy. So we, we're going to go hot 
right here. We're going to go to the next book. I don't think people would, you know, be surprised. And it is the Batman, the Batman, uh, first night number two. And it's, it's good. I, I actually really like this in a kind of, you know, not an ultimate type way, like you have the ultimate Spider Man. And if you're not mm. digging this way, but I think it kind of fills that little, you know, niche there because a lot of people aren't liking the Zdarsky Batman at the moment. But it is written by Dan Jurgens, art by Mike Perkins. It's six ninety nine. That that's a hefty price tag, but it is long. And at points, I'll admit, it did feel very long, very yeah, narration heavy. But you you get into that mode and that kind of like you know, well, it's back in the day deal. And I I actually like the look of it. I think that it is a cool story that gives you that nostalgia of. You know, even Golden Age comics with this play. Uh, but you go more in it. This was more of your pick than mine, even though I did like it. It's um, the artist Mike Perkins. You know, as you say, the art is awesome. Um, but Jim, I've, I've even had some comments, people saying, oh, I'm not sure if this is uh, not traced, but what do you call it? 3D, um, you know, CGI, whatever. Is, is it like just putting backgrounds from from photographs and stuff? But I think he's, he's done some great work on it, especially with the characters. The characters' faces are great. They've got, you know, individual expressions. And the Batman looks awesome. How good is the costume? I love that he skips leg day. He's got like the thinnest legs. They are, <laughs> they are like muscle. They are pretty thin. Oh, they're thin. And uh, I don't know. I, I, it reminds me of just what Mike Perkins has always done. Like every time I see his art, it, it does look like this. But again, I think people are in that mode that they want to try to like, you know, they're the, the sleuths. They're the world's greatest detectives on these things to try to expose things. I kind of just read it and like what I see and enjoy the book. But yeah, it's a little darker deal. You end up having that historical references in it that some people are saying they're like thrown off because that's too political or it's too social. We talked about this the first issue. It's yeah. the time of, you know, you can't just ignore that there, you know, World War II is happening in, in Europe. We're about to enter and all these things. That's part of it. And it's 1939, out- isn't it, Jim? Just come out of the great depression you know yeah it's the, the haves and the have nots yeah 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 exactly and you have a uh, bruce wayne who's going to be looked at different this is not anything that is like to me forced for a reason except for to give you the lay of the land and the time there but yeah you end up having this whole deal with these zombies and by the end batman realizes yeah yeah they're, they're zombies and but the funny thing though is that first issue ended with batman almost getting a, you know, pretty much on the electric chair I kept like the whole time that I'm like, why did they think that they could just do that? It's bad. Like, even if it's Batman, that guy is so crazy. Just trying to like electrocute everybody so that they can make these monster men. And it kind of feels, it feels like that night of the monster men kind of feel. And it does, and isn't it? I think they didn't like his costume. It's like, look at this idiot, his costume. Let's, let's electrocute, electrocute him. him. I think they're like, <laughs> look at this guy. He's pretty strong except for his legs. Like, we'll get him in this army and maybe they'll make him do legs. Uh, but yeah, and you have Julie Madison. You have her kind of realize that she might like to get a little sexy. And one of the things that people had commented, you have this rabbi that does pop up again that Batman gets to talk to. And it's kind of where he can open up. I, I get the idea. It does feel a little bit forced in the way that it leads into those scenes or whatnot. And I just think it's there so that Batman could actually talk to somebody about batman slash bruce wayne yeah i'm good with it jim yeah and so you have him there and like you don't have like an alfred i think that he kind of plays that that role in it uh that's so it. I, but that's it. i did see and, and again if you don't have that batman's a solitary guy who's just going to be narration 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 so i don't mind that being almost like a therapy type thing as well uh, but i i really like it i really do and i think that it's played up pretty well with the time frame and the art i think looks great and batman just beating up zombies and trying to figure this out i thought was pretty i like the pulpiness of it that kind of like noir-esque you know movie style to it yeah i'm really enjoying it because i I think we need a decent batman story at the moment you know we're really looking for that aren't we and i I like the idea this is and it's black label and it's you know it's elseworlds it's it but Mm. you still get that feel that this could be you know, in continuity, even if it wasn't or whatnot. I said I got the feel that this is like the serial, pulp serials version of the Batman. Like these could have been, this could have been something that you'd watch in like the theater in 1950 of like, oh, yeah. the Batman. And How I, awesome I think that's that cool. Yeah. And I love pulp stuff. So I, I'm in. I, I really liked it. And then at the end, where you even have 
the play of, and this has been something that came up recently, the idea, does Batman, has he ever used a gun? Does he use a gun? And he did actually carry guns at one point. Didn't really use them as much to shoot people. He'd shoot tires out and things like that. And then uh, it's funny, like people end up like, oh, well, the code and what it was, the comics code and also that Superman was selling a lot. It seems to be the big push for him not to use the gun then. But it's cool. That thing when he looks at the gun, you kind of think, Okay, this is Elsa. Is, is Dan Jurgens just going to have this, the Batman, use a gun? Because he could. It's it's black label. Pretty crazy. I see him looking at the gun at the end. He's just going to throw it down. I don't like guns and then walk away. But I, I think that most people should check it out. But that's it for DC. And in a surprise move, that's it for the big two. We don't have a Marvel book. I'm trying to, I think we had a, a couple last week, maybe one. But yeah, some of the books that I expected, like an Ultimate X-Men or even a Symbiote Spider-Man 2099, they just had the under what we said would be the idea of the best. Well, you were saying that in your review, weren't you, Jim? Ultimate X-Men, like you wanted to like it more and me too. You know, it, it was good. It was decent. It was a seven out of 10, but it's not quite, you know, best of the week. Yeah. Like I said, in our deal, we try to get the best of the week. You have to kind of earn it. It's not the yeah. best of what the whole round you have to actually get a score of about an eight out of 10 or more. And yeah, I I still am into ultimate X-Men, but it just was a little clunky. Uh, This deal and the pacing is a little off and I don't think we're getting a lot per issue, which I think is a big problem, but I still like it. And like I said, a symbiote, uh, Spider-Man 2099, the Peter David book, I really want to like, because I really want to, and I support Peter David. I got the book, but for the show, it was a little, and really it was because of my lack of knowledge of the 2099 stuff, and it got a little, little wonky with a little I'm saying, I love double the art, cross, the awesome cross applesauce. Yeah, it looked great. I'm telling you, though, mm. this idea of I'm impersonating you, and you're my half-brother, and oh my god, of the mind, kill, uh, I'm like, yeah, I'll, maybe it'll get there on the next deal. But the indie books, we have a bunch of them. A new number one, but a lot of the usual suspects, actually two new number ones. We're going to start with uh, one that you picked. Uh, what is that? Is this Rat City issue one, which I didn't even know was coming out, Jim. I'd forgotten about it. It's part of the Spawn universe. It's a little bit of a kind of Batman Beyond take on Spawn, you know, new characters um, and a different dimension of, a, a, yeah, basically a new Hellspawn character. And there's something about it. It's pretty basic, but I like the setup. I like the world building. And Erica Schultz. Erica Schultz, who knew she could write? <laughs> I here's the thing: a lot of people don't like like Hollow's Eve as a character. Like she was just in this week's Amazing Spider-Man. She yeah, has the she masks was. and she changes the things. It gets wacky. The miniseries with her, I actually like. I didn't. It, I thought it ended in a clunky way, but at one point it was like a guilty pleasure. I actually was it liking it. It started off really well. I was really enjoying it. Yeah, the first few issues of that. It went a little wonky, but. I, I actually don't play like Erica Schultz when you you have people say like, oh, man, I hate this, this, this. I, you don't really hear Erica Schultz be brought up. Maybe people will say because no. nobody really knows her. But I think that she is pretty good. I just think that she has to like maintain the deal. And me and you were talking, you were wondering, we don't know. And maybe somebody will know if this is a ongoing or yeah. a many. Not sure. uh, it's it's weird because y- you would think that it's like okay rat city it, that's it but maybe it's an ongoing maybe you i think it's good jumping on point for people who haven't read any spawn at all you know you can you come in yeah and just enjoy yeah, it. and it's it's fun because for me i thought and i did read it and i enjoyed it i think that it's one of those where i want to jump in on all the spawn stuff but it's kind of cool to jump on something like this that like you're a big spawn fan but me and you are starting here on you know square one together Because it's like, even if they had a new Spawn number one, you know, regular Spawn Al, I wouldn't be jumping on square one with you because you have all the the past that they would probably say, this is actually just all brand new. So I actually thought it was really cool. And I I do like Z. Carlos's art on it uh, because I think it fits the idea of that, like even like a Spider-Man 2099 or like you said, a Batman Beyond. And I I think that that's kind of cool. And it's actually in my mind, I would have been shocked if you said, you know, this is something they've never done. It seems like something. And it, and it works out. They even explain how this whole thing, you know, is a thing. And I think it's pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, it's related I, I, to the, the main Spawn universe. Yeah, it's expensive. Jim, it's only three ninety nine as well for 40 pages. 
And and we said that we we mentioned earlier with the Batman the first night. Now I still think that's a deep, a really good quality book, but that's seven dollars. This is one of those where if you even have any sort of kind of well, I I might check. It's only three ninety nine, and it's oversized, pretty good. Like you said, it, I think that the idea of it being basic helps it out. Like it ends yeah, up, you too. know, giving the info. You get going. I just hope that she can maintain. You know the story and make it pretty cool because I think it could be something that's a, a really cool deal. I I do question the idea of it just being called Rat City, and I had no idea myself. I actually just went we the books come in and I get review copies and things like that. I go through and I right away click on all the number ones and look, and I'm like, oh, what's this? And I, wait a minute, this is Spawn. Like I had no idea. I actually I was going to message right. you there. Like, is this something that you know of or I? Get? And yeah, I think that that might be its downfall, though. It really should just. Make- it was announced a while back, you know, one of the comic comic cons, but it's it's been a while, so I think a lot of people kind of forgot about it, including me. Yeah, I mean, there. Yeah, it'd be funny to call it Spawn Beyond, but something you have to <laughs> you have to kind of get Spawn in that that you know Spawn Rat City, even just Spawn twenty one ninety nine. Yeah, just, <laughs> Spawn twenty three hundred something, some stupid <laughs> thing like that. But you end up where yeah, I think that you should point out that it, it is a spawn book if you are you know the whole deal on mcfarland but we'll see and Definitely. i hope it does i hope yeah. it does end up continuing because i'm going to follow that the next book is the book that i said that you got me on a lot of other people loved it and now it's like the thing that i was talking with a bunch of people about now it's beneath the trees where nobody sees number five and it's written by patrick horvath art by patrick horvath everything Patrick Horvath, and it's three ninety nine. Yeah, yeah, even the colors. He does it all. He's a, <laughs> he's a quadruple threat, right? He may even <laughs> edit it himself, and and he publishes it. He's working the printing press. Uh this the cover you were talking about. The cover, it, it is Look it's at that crazy. Cover, Jim. It's it's crazy, isn't it? It's amazing. Yeah, and I, I do really like this book. I yeah, I was I was shocked that it was a a six issue mini. I I guess it works out, and that's a lot of the stuff like this would be. But I kind of. I'm mad because I got into it late and now it's going to be over. And this penultimate issue, you do end up it. it I, not that it felt rushed. It felt like a little bit disjointed. Like when we yeah, end I've last seen people issue, saying this is the weakest of the bunch so far. In the it comments. feels like just a setup for a big finale because I was expecting in the town, you know, doing more of that, trying to get back. But really, it's almost like a idea of Sam going back to nature. And ends up where going to the city, trying to hide out, but there's a lot of people inside. Oh, and then gets on the road. Oh, my God, the cops are looking at things and goes off the road and then actually ends up seeing a bunch of real, you know, not anthropomorphic bears, but bears fighting, killing a deer and really seemed to, in my mind, made things click in Sam's mind of like, first off, loving the guts, which it, it was a weird scene. The idea that you're seeing this nature thing happen. You're like, yeah. oh, my God. And then it goes to Sam, and she, like licking her lips and like, oh, yeah, like really loving it. But I think the idea of this was, all right, you know what? I'm a bear. I'm going to go be like a bear. And, and really, it's <laughs> funny when you think of the thing. This is the craziest thing that I think comes up in this. You have a story with an anthropomorphic bear who is like we said, a Dexter, right? Serial killer yeah. doing things. But what th- what Sam the bear is doing Pretty natural for a bear. Like a bear does kill other animals and eats them and rips them apart. So it's a funny play of, like, in my mind, which is the deal? Is it more a bear or is it more anthropomorphic bear? And I think that that's what I, I thought that there was a crazy thing. Like, I'm like, I, I, is that the code that we're supposed to crack? Because when Sam sees this, she's like, I'm, I'm a bear. I'm going to go back. And then, but again, when you start doing the things that you, it's okay, I'm going to get. Uh, a blade i'm gonna get a lot of like it starts back and you know back into the serial killer mode of it it's kind of that weird play overall so i did like it but i thought it was of the issues we've had i think it is the weakest one but it Mm. still looked really good but even then like a lot of the visuals they're cool looking and really but it is just like walking through a crowd and then getting in the car and things like that. So it once was a you fast get read, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a bit of a fast read, a bit of a setup. Jim, can I ask you, are you more of a Yogi Bear or a Teddy Roxton? I, uh, well, I used to at one point thought Teddy Roxton was from the depths of hell. I thought it was like possessed. And once <laughs> they started like Teddy Roxton to me 
once you started having all those movies with like dolls that come to life, I'm never getting near a Teddy Ruxpin. Uh, Terrifying. Yogi, Yogi, I'm telling you, what bear? I also didn't like the Berenstein Bears that much because they always seem to be like wanting to teach you lessons and stuff. So Yogi Bear used to annoy me as a kid. I don't know why. Just something about him. It's like, oh. I'm telling you, I, people get mad at me. Yogi Bear annoys me, but I just hate, hate Foghorn Leghorn so much. That stupid voice and everything about him. Uh, I say, I say, I say, I say, I say, I say, son. But the chicken hawk can't stand him. So they end up where all of this go and go, I did like this, but it was a little down. You, you with me? Yeah, I'm the same, but I'm looking forward to the finale. Can you believe it? The finale's next issue, number six. Yeah, it's so weird. It's so weird that that's the deal. But yeah, I... It was great build up to get here. It really was. Yeah, it was. And I think it's worth getting. And uh, obviously, if you're going to get it, you know, you get this issue as well. I do think it sets up that, you know, getting back to basics. And now I'm just going to kill everybody, especially, you know, the other guy who was kind of that wacko, like, hey, I'm your biggest fan serial killer deal. So I- I'm looking forward to that. But we'll go to the next book, which is actually, it came out of nowhere. A lot of people said that they were looking forward to it in the anticipated comics deal, but it's Uncanny Valley, uh, number one, written by Tony Flix and art by Dave Walker, who does the TMNT stuff. And Tony Flix is the guy who's doing feral, stray dogs, that sort of thing. And really, this came out in the perfect time. I just ended up reading Feral. Didn't know much about Tony Fleeks, and now I'm kind of like a Tony Fleeks fanboy. And then this came out, and I'm like, okay, let's see. And it's from Boom Studios, 499. It's pretty wacky. Uh, and pretty much it's a kid who we find out eventually he has his mom's side of the family seem to be cartoon characters. And yeah. he is at, they call him, I, you know, for lack of better words, they call him almost a half-breed of being like part human, part cartoon it seems and you even have like the disney crows coming after him you end up where the the uh grandfather looks like yosemite sam that's what kind of threw me earlier and you end up where even when he ends up getting in trouble at school it's cartoony comic physics he ends up jumping off a bridge and goes through the, the you know the ground like he's the wily e. coyote and things like and it's pretty cool and he doesn't know what's going on and then you get, and it's one of those things that it, you have this in a lot of books where, you know, they're trying to hide the kid from being and all of a sudden he starts having powers or whatever. But this is comic or cartoony physics type powers, which is kind of cool. It's very quick. Uh, and I hope the mom's okay. At the, at the end of this, it doesn't look like she might be okay. But Yosemite Sam grandpa says that she might be. But yeah, they come and grab the kid as he's getting pretty much trying to be taken by these crows and the grandfather comes up and says, we got to get going. And they go off and they even say at one point, the mom keeps saying to the kid, listen, you got to run. And when I say run, you run. And when she says it, it's like the classic, you know, Bugs Bunny type where all of a sudden the feet start going and it's all a whirlwind and he crashes (laughs) through. And it's really funny afterwards when he looks and he sees where he crashed through the deal. But I thought it was pretty, I thought it was actually very good. Might have been my favorite book of the week, actually. I, I really enjoyed it, but it, it's, it, it is a quick read. But I suggest if you like Tony Fleek's, uh, to get it. You yeah. like it? Well, you recommended this to me, Jim. I wouldn't have um, known about it or read about it without you saying so. I appreciate that. I got into Tony Fleek's via Local Man. You know, he's doing that as well. and that, That's been really good. And then, like you said, Feral. Feral was great, the first issue of that. So I'm on board. Yeah. Yeah. And people say I still haven't read Stray Dogs, but people have said that that's really cool as well. But We'll finish up now. Still seems, I, I swear to God, we were going really quick. And then I look, I'm like, it seems like the same amount of time. I don't understand. I don't understand what happens. Feels like I've been war- talking for two hours, Jim. We're <laughs> really in <laughs> People like, it sounds like they've been listening for two hours. It's turned into a Morrison we, review. Yeah, really. Oh, my goodness. We don't do that. Transformers number seven uh, is our last book. And yes, most people, and the big play here, Jorge Corona's art. People were, were I was worried. I didn't like his his art on the Batgirls book. I thought it was messy. I thought, but you see that he is trying to. You know, I it, it's sad. I, I guess you can get mad if you say he's trying to ape the style of, the, but he is right. I mean, it, it's him trying to keep the same style. I think so yeah, but he doesn't disappoint. You know, like you said, a lot of people were kind of like, oh, I'm not sure about this. You know, is it going to work? But I think it does. Yeah, I think that it, you uh, tell me if I'm wrong. I think it's one of those things that people love this Transformers book so much. And it's almost like 
they're waiting for the bubble to burst, right? Like yeah. nothing yeah. can last that good. We can't have nice things in comics nowadays. Why so can't we, we have were, nice things? Dude? I know. I don't know. I can't. <laughs> so you end up where I think that it was like, okay, this is when it goes bad. Oh, you know, even when you had the announcements of the Scarlet book, uh, Kelly Thompson and the uh, Dan Waters doing the, what is it? The Destro book. Even, Destro, people were, yeah. even people were using that as the, oh, that's where it ends. That's when the fun times end. And I think they were kind of, I think people, and it's not being mean. I think that people are just worried because everything falls apart eventually in comics, especially now. Like nowadays, it seems like nothing can remain good for very long. So I was pleasantly surprised when I saw it and I look, I'm like, yeah, I actually, our man Zach, he in the, in the Slack chat, he said that he likes Jorge Coronas are better. <laughs> and you Warren yeah, Johnson. I saw he, that. Yeah, yeah, he said he can follow it easier. And everybody has their own, you know, take or why they like something or what. But that's what he said. I, it's I the think. expressions on the faces, Jim, that, you know, the Transformers. He, he's really good with the expressions, I think. Yeah. And I thought we were going to get more of Spike and more of Spike, you know, with his dad ending up pretty yeah. much giving up his life for Optimus Prime. I thought we'd get more. And when you did, that's the only thing that I'll point out in the art. And actually, Zach said it as well. When Spike gets out of the hospital, he does look like suddenly he's 35. He looks like an old <laughs> man. Right? But that, besides that, though, I thought the expressions were great. And whatever your favorite Transformer is, whatever your favorite Decepticon is, I really like Carly, the girl. She cracks me up, especially at this point where she's like, I am here for one reason. I am going to get revenge and I'm going to kill Starscream. I don't care what RC comes in. And it's like, oh, you know what? You really got to watch out because revenge, that ends up changing you. Pretty much says that. And Carly's like, I don't need your talk here. Actually says, what's your name, RB or something? Shut your mouth. And <laughs> wants to keep shooting. It made me laugh so much. Though, one of the other things in it where you have flashbacks back to Cybertron, and also we'll get to a, a, in a second the stuff with Starscream. But at one point, you have the Autobots, and they're all going. And the one Autobot, I forget who it was. It might have been Huffer, but says, let's haul ass. Let, let's move on. And I'm like. Do they have asses that, like, really threw me off a bit? Like, wouldn't you say, like... I don't like, think so, no. Like, and I was, like, thinking, you say exhaust? Move your exhaust. Like, I'd probably say that. Let's hold bumpers, Jim. It doesn't quite have the same ring no, to it, it does it? it doesn't have... <laughs> see, that's what I think exhaust might be. Like, kiss my exhaust. Taste my... Oh, yeah. Yeah, it was weird when it said that. I'm like... <laughs> kiss my tailpipe. <laughs> yeah, tailpipe. <laughs> I'm like, do you have asses? It was very odd. Uh, but in the stuff, too... You have a play, and uh, people were worried from the cover, and a lot of people do like Starscream. I like Starscream, but I like him because he's so over-the-top ridiculous, and he's been awful in this. And you end up sound waves just like, this is bullcrap. I'm taking over. You have we And at one point, the Decepticons did have a major advantage, and then they blew it. And Starscream is just kind of Starscream. I love Soundwave in this. Yeah, Soundwave Soundwave is is, awesome. yeah and it's so great where Soundwave's like, I'm, I'm taking over. And I love Star- Starscream goes through like almost like the stages of grief because he's like, no way. I'm-. And then next he's, hey, we, we could be co-leaders. And then he just starts getting the crap kicked out of him. Then he thinks he's <laughs> going to end up taking out Star. I actually thought they were going to have him take down Soundwave by just throwing rocks and dirt at him at that one point. Like that's that's like, a, a you know, a karate movie thing. Throw the sand in their face and stuff. You know, Jean-Claude Van Damme can't see anymore, but he remembers getting that fish out of that bowl. You end up all that though. Starscream gets the he gets his tailpipe kicked, right? Goodbye, Starscream. They kicked Scream. exhaust is what they did. They and did. Yeah. And to the point where they're even ripping him apart to use this parts and then throw him over a cliff. But it made me laugh, but kind of sad because I do like Carly a lot. And what that's her thing. She needs to and that's where she's she, at this moment, she she can't get revenge. He's done. It seems like he's completely done. And even if he's like, you know, crawling under the crevasse, it's not going to be enough for her to, you know, get that revenge that she wants. And having Spike back and you even have, you know, little weird things that uh, Optimus Prime is seeing and all these things. And he feels bad for what happened with Sparky, Sp- Spike's dad. So that was a pretty cool deal as well. And I saw some people getting excited because he saw Ultra Magnus. I know. I'm just going to ask you about that. What do you think of that, that page? That's pretty awesome when he appears. Yeah, it was awesome. He was my teacher. His name was Ultra Magnus. Yeah, that was cool. And again, that's where RC's trying to like, 
I'm pretty cool, right? I, I, I'm a good shot, but I don't like being. I love Carly's like, who are you? Carly's like, get out of here. Cool story. Yeah, she doesn't even want it. Yeah, that's what she says. Real <laughs> she cool story. She's so pissed off as well, doesn't she? Look at her yeah, face. She is mad. Uh, so, yeah, I liked it. Again, some things like an Ultra Magnus, that's going to hit more with other people, but I know. Yeah. I know it's big and it feels big. I was just more for, you know, the individual things. And that's why I do like having Carly and Spike in the book. I say this every time we talk about it. A lot of people I saw fought back at me, like, oh, that's the worst. We don't need the humans in it. That's the, you know, that's where you get a lot of the jumping on and in and the point of view for somebody like me, especially who doesn't know a ton of this, just you, learning. I'm, I'm so. the same. I don't have much background on it. You know, I didn't used to watch it. So um, I've got to ask, though, I'd be really curious to know what the sales figures are like. I really hope it's still doing well. You know, I'm sh- maybe not as much as it was the first few issues but. you know what the the thing was it was like the the big thing was the you know energy on universe stuff it's still where i see the <laughs> ranking it's good but then the ultimate stuff from marvel came and now that's like that's the yeah. hot ticket now that's, that's the, the whole property thing. yeah it is so but that that's it that is all our books as i said I'm, I'm sure there'll be people who have you know hey i like these two at marvel or you forgot this at dc or a bunch there's a ton of indie stuff so let us know what you think what your books of the week are Uh, Because there's so many comics, sometimes we don't even get to them, but I'm certainly up for learning. Yeah, the thing, just as the last second, that the uh, Last Mermaid, that is, it's called that, right? The Last Mermaid. That that book I had no idea about, and uh, I ended up catching up with that. Sully loves it, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah, Sully was going on. So after, I think it came out last week, and I ended up reading both issues. Unfortunately, after we recorded, I really liked that too. So I'm all for adding other books and whatnot but that is it and please everybody please go over to gray's channel the wakasashi's tea house channel where he does a ton of uh, book reviews but also actual book reviews that's where you get fancy and he does movie reviews and tv stuff it's really cool <laughs> uh, yeah go over and listen and watch his stuff especially the link will be in the show notes but again let us know what you think and that is it but thanks, thanks for joining me gray and we'll talk to you yeah. all later